Well, thank you, Derry, for joining us today. We thank appreciate you. it. Uh, this is our show called Impact, which is all about sharing your insights, your experiences, your lessons, and what helped you create a greater impact in the world, whether it's be discussing respect in the workplace, as, as we were going to be discussing on our other show, Gift of Respect, or other forms of, of ways you've be, been able to have an impact. So, Derry, I always like to let you, the guest, tell about you. So I'm going to let you tell everybody a little background on yourself and how you got to where you are, what that journey was, and we'll go from there. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much. I'm just completely honored to uh, to be part of this with you, Mike. I've, uh, I've seen you speak before and uh, completely respect what you do. Uh, my my journey, uh, you know, started you know, way back uh, when I was a teenager. Uh, I was actually just about, uh, just thinking about what to do with my life. And, uh, and my father suddenly passed away. He was just 45 years old. And, you know, in that, at that time, it was just a, uh, of course, something I'll never forget. But for many reasons, it's something I'll never forget. He, uh, he was for sure the, you know, foundation, the rock of our family. My mom was a stay-at-home parent. Uh, I was one of four siblings. And, and suddenly everything changed in one moment. And... I decided uh, instead of going to college, I would stay and, and help my mom and, uh, and I ended up getting a job at the local mining company in this small town I lived in. And, and I, I got a job in personnel. Do you remember when human resources used to be called personnel? Uh, that was a long time ago. And, uh, and I, I also got a chance to, uh, to go through my father's things. He was an executive there, so I cleaned out his office. And in his office, I, I discovered that you know, he was really, uh, in some of his personal notes, he was really under a lot of stress. And we, of course, had no idea. Certainly I, as a teenager, no idea about that. So I started thinking, wow, you know, here's this guy that I lived with and loved and hung out with, and, and I didn't know this about him. And then I got to know people through my, my role in human in personnel. Uh, I just saw how many people were not having a lot of fun at work. And as a young person, I thought, wow, that could be different. You know, you spend a lot of time at work, and, uh, and it shouldn't be, certainly be something that kills you, as it did my father. And that, that's really the way it appeared to me. So I decided then to pursue a, a business degree in human resource management. And before that, I was actually going to go into sciences, if you can imagine. I'm not sure now why, other than I think I had a crush on my science teacher. That's, that's the reason. But... Uh, but I went into business, uh, majored in human resources, and I was ready to, to change the world, of course, and help people to be happy and, and positive at work. And right after university, I, uh, I met uh, a wonderful man, and uh, we decided to get married. And eight months into our marriage, he died uh, by suicide. And again, something I'll, of course, never forget, uh, but it was another moment another key milestone, if you like, on the journey where I, again, started to reflect on uh, perhaps secrets that people have, things that might be going on inside that people aren't sharing with, with others that, that care about them. So this just added uh, fuel, energy, if you like, to the, the mission I was already on, which was to, to propel opportunities for people to connect with themselves, connect with each other, and, and to have a meaningful, productive, positive experience at work, which, and, and you know, I, I work in workplaces, but of course, this translates it at home as well. And uh, so I, uh, I've continued to do that. This was, uh, again, many years ago, over 20 years ago when this happened, and, and since I've uh, I married again, I've had, got a couple of kids who I, I care about, and I've really want them to be able to enter homes and workplaces that are healthy. And, uh, and, and another experience happened, if you can believe it. So it's sort of like the three, uh, and I'm hoping it stops as far as uh, not very positive experiences, but uh, my older sibling uh, experienced a, a huge setback in his life uh, when he was diagnosed with depression. And, and in fact, he, he ended up in prison. Mike, uh, he's a guy who... Again, like you and me, just a guy, you know, right. had everything, full life. And, and so, again, I just became, uh, uh, you know, it just added more 
in terms of my interest and energy around uh, doing what I can to help all of us to, to uh, connect with ourselves and with each other. And I think that's the pathway to, uh, you know, a, a positive, happy world. Well, what so you share, yeah, well, what you shared, I mean, that, those are really difficult life moments that propelled you into the, the deep digging that you've done to help others. You know, it's, it's something that when you've come from a place of something that negative that triggers, you know, people will often ask you, how did you do that? How did you take these negatives and somehow find the positive, find, you know, the cliche, this, the silver lining? You know, how did, how did you do that? Uh, and I certainly have been, been asked that, and I, uh, you know, I think that uh, with anything, when, the, when there's some trauma that happens, there's, of course, some time of just healing and uh, for any, any of us. But, uh, but I found that, um, you know, for me, the, that time period was relatively short in the sense that I, uh, I started to think about what could be good out of this experience, what could I take away from this? that could help me, that could help others. And, uh, and, and I just started down that path. It was really interesting that um, after my, uh, my first husband, Kelly, who again, we were just married for eight months, I was literally still on the honeymoon uh, when this occurred and had no idea that he was in, in despair. Um, I, I started a new job shortly after that. And, uh, and again, I was still in the healing time for sure. I could not say the word suicide. I had not come to terms with that at all. But my, my new manager took me out for lunch, and uh, he knew I was a widow. He knew I was 27. That, that's really all he knew. And uh, So he said, oh, I'm, you know, I'm so sorry. He offered his condolences. And, and uh, then he said something that, again, I'll never forget. He said, uh, I envy you. And I sort of looked back at him blankly. Uh, Pardon me, and he said, uh, "Just let me let me explain." He said, uh, "I envy you, Derry, because you have an opportunity to do something that lots of us don't do ever in our life, and if we do, it's certainly later in our life to decide what really matters to you and what you want to do with this life you've been given." And honestly, it was really within days of that conversation I thought he's right. I do, I can choose, I can decide. And so I, I really believe when you say, how did I do that? That I, um, I did allow myself to be where I needed to be in terms of say the, um, you know, dealing with the, the trauma, but I, I just started putting one foot in front of the other and uh, to say what could be useful and productive for me here. And I do believe that I, I lucked out in meeting really wonderful people like this manager who said things it just stuck with me and, and propelled this, you know, this big change for me. And uh, uh, so, it, you know, when people say, how do, how do you do it? How do you look for the good? Um, I say just, you know, you can, you can start with just a moment of saying what could be good right now in this moment. And it can just start with something really small. Yeah, and you gave a great example of being present in the moment, right? Because if you were not present when he said that, if you were just going to defend, become defensive and say, how dare you? Versus you, you, you paused, as he said, just give me a moment, just give me a moment to explain. And you gave him the moment, so that allowed you to be present, him to be present, and, it, and he allowed, you allowed him to shift your paradigm uh, of where you're coming from, which is incredible. So I think it's a great lesson in being in the moment and being, being open to really hear what the world's bringing to you at that moment. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, I... I um when I was thinking about talking to you earlier about the idea of respect, you know, it's a, uh, I think the greatest gift all of us can give to ourselves is, is that idea of, of mindfulness, of being just really present and pausing. You know, I just had a, a keynote at an event yesterday, and one of the executives who had been in and out of the room a few times during the, the keynote that was just an hour, uh, came in and he said, well, that was great, you know, what I saw, but that was really great. And, uh, and I said, oh, that, that's wonderful, thank you. And he said, uh, yeah, you know, I just, uh, I just can't, can't kind of be in the room for an hour. And then he and I, you know, he started laughing after he said that. And we just talked about how, you know, we've, we've got to change that. You know, he, uh, he even reflected, he said, I don't even know about the last time that I've been present with my kids. 
You know, have I have I really been in the room with them in the last few years? You know, it, I think, uh, and it, it it again just starts with even a minute. I did a little 15-second uh, meditation with a group uh, last week, and it can just start with that, just to notice what it's like to be present. Because I think a lot of us have, in this world, have lost that a little. Oh, there's no doubt. I'm I'm a group a member of Strategic Coach, which is you know Canadian-based company, uh, Dan yes. Sullivan. And it's amazing when you get 40 executives in a room, and many of these people own their own companies or are you know in the C-suite of a company, and they admit they're at their games, checking their email, their you know, kids' games. You know they're doing all this. There's not really, and and I'll admit I've done it. You know, and so one of the things that I learned in the last year was that shutting it down, walking away, being present, and it's huge. It's huge. And how did you how did you take the steps of realizing I'm going to take the positive here and make an impact? Like, so what was the next step to? All right, there's an opportunity here. What do you what do I do with it? Yeah. Well, for me, it was uh, learning as much as I could. So uh, just to devour as much information and as much of the global intelligence around, uh, again, happiness, positivity, uh, uh, post-traumatic growth, uh, as much as I could find, I was just devouring information. And I feel that I'm so lucky to have the, the job that I have where I'm in front of audiences every week. And so I can share what I'm learning, and I'm learning it again. So I, I, what I encourage all everyone in my audiences to do is Whatever you learn, if you take anything away from, from any experience, something you've read, that somebody you've seen, is, uh, uh, to share it with someone else. Because when you talk about it, when you teach someone else, share it with someone else, it becomes a gift to you as well. You just learn it better. It goes a little bit deeper. So I just started talking and talking and talking and sharing uh, that and writing. Uh, so let's, uh, let's pause there on the talking and talking. How did you start talking? Because you weren't a speaker. You, no. you were working in human resources at the time. Yeah. So what was the step you took to start sharing, to start speaking? I, um, I actually hired some consultants in the organization that I was working with. And I uh, was hugely attracted to them. I loved uh, the people that they were. You mean in the style of work they do. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because that's a whole other reason to go hire the consultant. Hey, you're good looking. Can you help me over here? Or I'm attracted to you. That's right. Exactly. So, yeah, I just love their message and the, and the kind of people that they were. So I, uh, and this was, by the way, shortly within a, a year and a half after Kelly passed away. And uh, so I, I just, uh, over coffee, said, uh, I would love to do what you do. I don't know if I can or how I would do that, but I would love to do it. And they said, uh, well, we can't pay you, <laughs> you, you know, but if you, if you want to join us and you get some work, we'll mentor you, and, uh, but you're on your own as far as, you know, eating. <laughs> so I thought uh, I was just uh, sort of young enough at the time, and I was, uh, I'd always been a good saver, so I, uh, I thought I could live for a year and uh, see how this goes. So I actually left my job. Human Resources, and I joined these two gentlemen, and uh, lo and behold, within a, about a week of joining them, I got a year-long contract with a national organization, and I, I, so I, it, and it really just snowballed from there. I feel that I just was so lucky, and, and uh, But I'm going to so pause I, you, because you really weren't lucky. You took a risk most people weren't willing to take, and that was, that enabled you to have the opportunity, you know, to make that difference. Uh, the question I have for you is you did something similar to uh, what I did when I got started. And I think there's two mindsets out there. There's the mindset of take it slow and grow your business and stay in your job. And then there's a the mindset of dive in. Give everything up, everything you have up and dive in. Because if you're going to do it, do it all the way. And that leads to a bit of desperation. Because you, you've got, you had money saved up. Most people don't. And so it leads to a moment of desperation. I'm a huge believer, but maybe it's a personality thing and maybe you and I are similar. I'm a huge believer that desperation is the most awesome inspiration. That when everything's on the line and you make it that way, you got to find a way to succeed. Versus if you take it nice and slow over here, 
there's this comfortable place giving you an income or giving you a safety net. What's really the hurry if things don't go right over here? What are your views on that? Well, I completely agree with you on that, uh, Mike. I, uh, I very much uh, have adopted that in my life, and it, that is my, the way I go through life, which is to, uh, to jump in. To, to take a risk and see what happens, and uh, and I, you know, and of course, mindful risks, uh, <laughs> as I teach my teenage children. Now, <laughs> yes. Mindful risks, but uh, but a risk nonetheless. I I agree that uh, that I I feel and, and people that I speak with who, who are the same uh, feel that that's that is life. That's where I am most alive is when I uh, take that risk and and believe in myself and in what's possible. So, uh, so I highly encourage people to do that. Uh, and, and, you know, some people say, well, you know, I can't quit my job, Barry. I'd love to. I'd like to do what you do or what, you know, do, do this other thing, uh, paint, for example, for a living. But I, I can't quit my job. And so I talk about, well, what small risk could you take? What small thing could you do right now while you're, you know, uh, starting to prepare yourself and start to notice what happens? And that's awesome because I have to be honest, I'm the one who would go back to him and go, you can't or you choose not to, you know, so that type of thing. So you've got a much more positive view there of saying, you know, well, what can you take the risk? And I think that's great insight to help that person at least see there's a step here that can be taken. Right, right. absolutely. And, uh, you know, for sure. And I think that, um, that, that for, for lots of people, uh, and, you know, maybe it's part of our human nature. We see the barriers much bigger than we see the opportunities, which is why I, you know, encourage people to stick your toe in. Just start, take that one step, because once you do, you will see that the opportunities are actually far bigger than the, than the obstacles. And it's like, contagious. Um, like one, yeah. once you take that risk and there's a little success, I want more. And suddenly you're realizing, oh, my gosh, maybe I can take the big step because it's not a big step anymore. It doesn't feel like this big, big step. You're giving us some great information there. I'm curious. I'm guessing you're a reader. I could be wrong. But it sounds like you said I look for that mindfulness and how to learn that about myself and how to absorb more information. What are two or three books that have had an incredible impact on your ability to see the world the way you see it today? Yeah. Well, uh, I would say uh, one of them is Brene Brown. I just got it. So yeah, yeah. Literally, I like I'm diving into it the last couple of days. So talk about timing, uh, and it's an easy read, super easy read. But continue, sorry. Yeah, I uh, I found it, and uh, Gifts of Imperfection. Her uh, one of her earlier books was uh, was when I really got hooked on her and the message that she delivers. So that would be one. Um, Elisha Goldstein uh, writes about mindfulness, and his latest book is called The Now Effect, and that's really about opportunity we have in that space between our thoughts uh, and I you know it, it's a really interesting book what's wonderful about it is it's full of exercises and oh. so as you're reading the book and learning you can practice right there it's embedded in in the book and he, he he's a prolific blogger uh, so there's tons of information uh, that he provides on an ongoing basis to people who purchase his book so I found that to be a, um, a really wonderful book. And then I'd say beyond that, it would have to be uh, Sean Acor's book on uh, the happiness advantage. I think ah. that he, uh, you know, anyone who's seen his TED talk, you can't help but fall in love with the guy. You know, he's, <laughs> he's pretty amazing. And he's really big right now. You know, I just noticed in Workforce.com's uh, latest publication that I just received, uh, actually held up in my... Uh, my session yesterday, uh, he talks about positivity genius. So the genius of positive and how, of course, his message is exactly where I, I find myself, uh, where I'm positioned for sure that, uh, that you're, you know, the pathway to, to all this good in life is, uh, is positivity is, and, and, and for sure that that's a choice. And, it, you know, we're naturally inclined to what's wrong, to what's missing. And, uh, and the real genius is in what's there, what's possible, what's present. Dara, you've offered to give us your book, which is awesome, a copy of your ebook to our listeners, our followers, our viewers. So here's what I want to do. I want them to show you what step they're going to take. 
So I'm going to throw a challenge out. For anybody who's watching today's segment, you need to leave a comment below the video of what step you're going to take based on what Derry shared with us today. And then we'll have somebody from our team randomly pick the person uh, based on the people that put what step they're going to take to get that ebook, and we'll we'll contact that person via their the Google Plus um, profile uh, and make that happen. That would be that would be great. I'll totally look forward to reading those. Cool, Derry. What's a way people can get a hold of you? They can get a hold of me uh, at my through email, Derry at DerryLatimer.com. My website. Uh, is DerryLatimer.com. They can contact me through that, uh, through the website. I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter, all uh, Derry Latimer. I would love to to link with people and, and stay connected. And just so everybody knows, Derry Latimer, that's D-E-R-I-L-A-T-I-M-E-R, correct? It so is. Thank that, you. DerryLatimer.com, at Derry Latimer. Find all of those on social media. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Derry. You've been a fantastic, fantastic guest. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'm so looking forward to, uh, to doing the radio spot. We'll yeah, yeah. We're going to make that work. We're going to get you on the gift of respect. Definitely. Great. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you. you.